Chopari, Rochamana, Prema, Smita, Udvikshana, Jabramad, Bru, Vishio Vacha, Hichavli Kampanutob Janabas, Hichavli Kampanutob Janabas, Hichavli Kampanutob Supana Pakshopari Rochamana Supana Pakshopari Rochamana Premas Mitod Vikshana Vibramad Bru Premas Mitod Vikshana Vibramad Bru Vishir Uvacho Hichavli Kampanutob Janabas Samabhasheva to Sam Ritena Supana Pakshopari Rochamana Premas Mitod Vikshana Vibramad Bru Translation Maitreya resumed, Sincerely extolled in these words, Lord Vishnu, shining very beautifully on the shoulders of Garuda, replied with words as sweet as nectar. His eyebrows moved gracefully as he looked at the sage with a smile full of affection. Purport. The word Vajasam Ritena is significant. Whenever the Lord speaks, He speaks from the transcendental world. He does not speak from the material world. Since He is transcendental, His speech is also transcendental, as is His activity. Everything in relation to Him is transcendental. The word Amrita refers to one who does not meet with death. The words and activities of the Lord are deathless. Therefore, they are not manufactured of this material world. The sound of this material world and that of the spiritual world are completely different. The sound of the spiritual world is nectarian and eternal, whereas the sound of the material world is hackneyed and subject to end. The sound of the holy name Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. I'm just reading this book. Everlasting increases the enthusiasm of the chanter. If one repeats monotonous, material words, he will feel exhausted. But if he chants Hare Krishna 24 hours a day, he will never feel exhausted. Rather, he will feel encouraged to continue chanting more and more. When the Lord replied to the sage Kardama, the word Vachasamritena is specifically mentioned, since he spoke from the transcendental world. He replied in transcendental words, and when he spoke, his eyebrows moved with great affection. When a devotee praises the glories of the Lord, the Lord is very satisfied, and he bestows his transcendental benediction upon the devotee without reservation, because he is always causelessly merciful toward his devotee. Vishir Uvacha, Ichi Avlikam, Anutob, Abjanabas, Tamaba, Basheva, Tasam, Nitena, Suparna, Pakshapari, Rochamana, Premas, Mitod, Vikshana, Vibramad, Bhu. Maitreya resumed. Sincerely extolled in these words, Lord Vishnu, shining very beautifully on the shoulders of Garuda, replied with words as sweet as nectar. His eyebrows moved gracefully as he looked at the sage with a smile full of affection. 
so the Supreme Personality of Godhead, whenever he speaks, his words are sweet, like Amrita. Amrita is also a word which is used here in the material world. We speak of the word nectar. All languages have something which is similar, but sometimes they call it that condensed juice from a fruit. Sometimes they call it the bliss or so-called bliss of certain aspects of material sense gratification. But when we use the word amrita in the sense of the Shastra, we refer to that taste which is beyond the material world. Now, of course, you will also find somewhere in the uh, Shastas that sometimes the pleasures of the heavenly planets are called Amrita as well. But every word is known in terms of the context it is used. So when the Shastra uses the word Amrita to refer to the mundane sex life of the material world, even if it's of the heavenly planets, obviously it is meaning something very different than when it speaks about the Amrita, which emanates from the spiritual realm. And here in this verse, the word Vatisamritena is the most significant aspect for it indicates that the Supreme Personality of Godhead's words uh, are always nectarian. Krishna has spoken many things for the benefit of the conditioned soul and the conditioned soul may receive great benediction by simply hearing the words of the Supreme Lord. Now, of course, we may not hear the words directly of Krishna, since the sound vibration uttered by Krishna thousands of years ago is no longer available to us who are covered and unable to hear such things. But the words, although they appear in written form, they are still absolute. Whether we are speaking in terms of the sound, then of course they will not be able to understand anymore and it will be lost. But for a long time now, many thousands of years, we have the opportunity to associate with that greatest personality through the words which are given in these transcendental literature. And because the transcendental sound or the transcendental sound representation is non-different, one is able to associate with a devotee even though the devotee may no longer physically be present before us. One of the biggest problems we have in this Krishna consciousness movement is the disappearance of great soul. Of course, right now, we only have experience of the disappearance of Srila Prabhupada. And that is enough to cause devastation within this whole world. However, uh, when the great souls disappear, they do not die. For their life, which is the instruction of Krishna consciousness that they give to others, remains captured within transcendental sound. Therefore, they live forever as that transcendental sound emanates throughout the world. They live within sound, within their instructions, always. And people may accept them like that. And so living, one may take shelter of the instructions of Srila Prabhupada, and for the same uh, logic, by the same logic, one may take shelter of the words of Lord Sri Krishna. After all, Lord Krishna in his original form 
may not be present standing before us delivering instruction, but when we receive it from Bhagavad Gita, there's no difference. And we may get full spiritual realization from the nectarian words of the Supreme Personality of Godhead directly from his own uh, personal instruction which is absolutely non-different from that which he spoke on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. It is, after all, the same words. They are now vibrated, perhaps in slightly different intonations, of course. There will be differences in the sound vibration, but the sound representation is exactly the same. Those absolute instructions which came from Krishna 5,000 years ago to Arjuna are still there available to us today and there's no difference. They are the same. So, we may take shelter in them. We may take shelter in those instructions which are absolute. And those instructions live forever. And he who follows those instructions, he also lives forever within those instructions. That is the difference between Vani and Vapu association. Those who are uh, preaching Krishna consciousness may give association according to their body. That's called Vapu. They may, by being before someone, speak to them in a certain way, smile at them in a certain way, engage them personally or speak to them directly, and thus one will become encouraged. However, the actual importance, or that which is more important, because that association is also important, it is not to be rejected or neglected. One should not neglect the form of spiritual master or other great personality. But what is important is the instruction because that instruction is not dependent on the physical presence. One may be there before one or not. Spiritual master may be there or not. More often he is not there than he is. After all, things have to be done in other places too. Therefore, that which is important is the uh, transcendental instruction which is delivered and then when one receives that instruction he will have a firm basis for engaging in spiritual life despite the inconveniences which may be delivered by the material body and circumstances so the Krishna consciousness movement is based on transcendental association through the word which is either written or heard and secondarily through uh, the bodily association secondarily of course and this is not to be uh, minimized this factor Srila Prabhupada's movement started factually on the basis of Srila Prabhupada's personal presence. Now, if Srila Prabhupada had simply mailed some of his books to America, I don't think this Krishna consciousness movement would have established. It was done on the personal presence because that personal presence is very essential for those who are very neophyte. A person who is neophyte, he has to see with his eyes and experience with his senses that which is Krishna, Krishna consciousness. Therefore, we have so many aspects in this Krishna consciousness movement uh, which are very visual or sensual in the sense that they are able to be perceived by these senses. Now, after all, it is stated, Atakshi Krishna Nama Dinaba Vedgayam Njiyai Sevan Mukhe Hi Jiva Dao Sayam Eva Sparatyadaha you cannot perceive the Supreme Personality of Godhead directly with your own material senses because he is adhokshaja beyond the capacity of the material senses to conceive or know. However, 
the Supreme Personality of Godhead may be perceived through transcendental sound, uh, beginning with the tongue. You may uh, understand the Supreme Lord directly by the senses when they are transcendentally enlivened through the procedures and processes of devotional service. For instance, you cannot perceive the Lord with blunt material senses, but if you chant and hear the holy name of the Lord, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, then you may perceive the Lord uh, through that sound vibration. Now, sometimes in the beginning, one has difficulty to understand how that sound vibration is Krishna himself because one cannot see Krishna just by seeing a sound. In fact, we don't understand the concept of seeing sound. This is a very difficult concept for us to understand. Of course, some who are very musically minded, they may see uh, sound as geometric patterns. They may see it... Of course, that is a bit of a development. Uh, This is not actually so spectacular since uh, all of the sensual perceptions come from sound. After all, sound is the original, uh, in the gross sense, the original sensual perception. Uh, From the ether, the sound is produced and the organ of perception of sound, the ear, is also generated. Uh, So uh, we find that the initial stage is the ether, and then from the ether comes the air, and within the air the touch sensation is produced, uh, and the skin is generated, the organ of reception. Then from the air the fire is generated, and from the fire we find the form is manifested, because fire has form. You cannot see air or ether. And then the eye is generated in order to perceive that form. From the fire comes the water. From water we find that the uh, beginning of taste is manifested. Uh, Krishna says himself, the Soham Apsukontea, he's the taste of water. That taste within water causes the tongue to be generated and the earth manifests the smelling sensation because it has aroma. Due to the aroma of the earth, the nose is generated. So from the sound, all the other sensual facilities are generated. And therefore, within sound, all the other sensual facilities exist. In other words, all perceptions exist within sound. It is a question of understanding that. Even in the material world, you can understand this if you are a little bit sensitive. There are persons who can perceive within sound all kinds of things. But those things they perceive are entirely material. They may only perceive material things. This is the perception of the heavenly planet. But even there, the spiritual things, of course thing is not a very good word, but the spiritual existence may be perceived, may not be perceived, directly, even by such sensitive persons. Because uh, even though you may be able to understand how everything comes from sound, one cannot directly perceive spiritual elements by one's blunt senses. Therefore, one has to perceive through spiritual sound and then develop his spiritual senses and then he can understand spiritual things. Otherwise, it is blocked. It is not possible to realize. Everything comes from transcendental sound vibration. Anavritti Shabda. Anavritti Shabda. It is stated in the Vedanta Sutra at the end. Anavritti Shabda. By sound vibration alone are we to be liberated. By sound vibration alone is emancipation received. Anavritti, to get freed from the entanglement of this material nature. 
Shabdat, Shabda Brahma. Shabda Brahman refers to that transcendental sound vibration <coughs> which is beyond this material world. Transcendental sound is the most powerful of all ingredients for from it the whole spiritual man manifestation may be revealed. Within sound vibrations such as the transcendental sounds given in the Vedic literatures and above all and especially especially in this Kali Yuga the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra we find that all spiritual perfections are possible and perceivable. Uh, Nama Chintamani Krishna's Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha Purna Shuddha Nitya Mukto Abhinatvam Nama Namina This is a description given in the Chaitanya Bhagavatam. Uh, Nama Chintamani Krishna Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha The holy name of Lord Sri Krishna Chaitanya or Krishna himself is the life, the transcendental life and energy. It is the embodiment of all spiritual energies. Uh, and it is the embodiment of all rasa. Uh, rasa Vigraha. Rasa means all of the perceivable uh, mellows or various transcendental emotions which may be experienced by one in the transcendental state. Yeah. So, he in that transcendental state who is uh, superior or beyond that uh, contamination of the material world, he is capable of understanding the Supreme through the transcendental sound alone because it is purna it is complete shuddha pure uh, nitya mukto eternally liberated and abhinatvam nama namana the name and the possessor of the name are not different the name of the Lord and the Lord himself he who possesses the name are not different because the name is transcendental because it is transcendental sound. Transcendental sound is absolute as are the transcendental objects of the spiritual realm. So when Krishna speaks to Kardama Muni to use the word Vachasamritana is not at all an exaggeration for it the transcendental Vibration coming from his lotus mouth is non-different from he himself. And he is the reservoir of all nectar. Amrita. So, our Krishna consciousness movement is based on sound vibration. It is based on sound vibration because sound vibration is the most important ingredient. Therefore, we <coughs> should always engage in shravanam and kirtanam. We should never think ourselves so advanced we don't have to engage in shravanam and kirtanam. Uh, it is very important and essential that we always engage in hearing and chanting the name and fame, the form, the glories, the pastimes, the words and instructions of the Supreme Personality of God. For by such chanting, and sincere hearing, our whole spiritual life will become perfected. And we must go on like this. We must do like that. That's very important. Mm -hmm. Of course, now we have to do quite some marathon in order to finish the temple room. So all of these Prabhus who come have a place to sit. But uh, still, that does not mean we should neglect in any way our hearing and chanting. For even if we said, all right, now everybody stop chanting so we have an extra two hours to work, we'll work so slow and spaced out that we'll waste six hours. Yeah. By so-called saving two, we'll waste six, which means we're minus four. Yeah. By chanting our rounds nicely and hearing them, we will save much time because we will work more efficiently at the end. And therefore... We should go on hearing, chanting, remembering, serving, 
and above all, <laughs> always being dedicated to the lotus feet of the Lord, which will include all these other things, we'll be able to uh, realize the Supreme Personality of Godhead very quickly and go back home, back to Godhead, which is our whole purpose and goal of life. So I don't want to keep us very much longer. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.